Hello, bonjour. Thank you, um, organizers, for the opportunity to tell you about ARACS, which can analyze knowledge graphs in order to answer translational biomedical questions. Our team includes researchers in Eric Deutsch's group at the Institute for Systems Biology, my group at Oregon State University, and David Kozlicki's group at Penn State University. Our work on ARACS is funded by the National Center for Advancing Translational Sciences, or NCATS, which aims to speed up drug discovery. Six years ago, NCATS launched the Biomedical Data Translator Project, Translator for short, as a consortium of, uh, that now comprises 15 teams. So the consortium is trying to develop a system for answering translational questions. So what are those? Some example translational questions uh, might be, what drugs could be used to treat KCN-MA1-linked channelopathy? That's a rare disease. What drugs could downregulate expression of the gene KCN-MA1? Or what pathways uh, explain why sickle cell trait is protective against malaria? Translator aims to bring together structured knowledge, large-scale data sets, and computational reasoning within a unified system that can be used by clinicians or biomedical researchers. I suppose a benchmark for success uh, for the project would be um, if it provides insights that could not be obtained by just a Google, PubMed, UpToDate, or ChatGPT query. So we're trying to leverage biomedical knowledge that's now available in structured forms from various knowledge bases. So let me give you a tiny example here. Um, in this little knowledge graph, the gene TMM1 encodes the protein UEV1, which affects the process autophagy, which affects the risk of heart failure. More generally, the knowledge graph around any one concept is quite dense. And this is what necessitates computational methods. Here's how translator works. So the translator user interface inter interprets your query and ensures that query concepts like disease names are appropriately recognized. The user interface turns the query into a query graph, which it sends to the autonomous relay system or ARS. The ARS sends the query graph to one of six relay agents. Each relay agent is being built by a separate team, and we're one of them. The relay agents select and then query knowledge providers to retrieve relevant information from various perspectives, such as pathways, GWAS, clinical data, or drug indications. The information from the knowledge providers is transmitted back to the relay agents. Um, which combine it and filter it into result graphs that are transmitted back to the ARS, which merges and ranks results. The modular region, reasoning agent that our team developed is called ARACS. It provides capabilities for building a working knowledge graph and extracting from it a list of ranked results. For performance reasons, ARACS retrieves information from RTX KG2, a large in-house knowledge graph. ARAX also queries a variety of translator knowledge providers and external knowledge sources. Both the user interface and, the and other translator systems can access ARAX via its web interface. ARAX's code is available on GitHub. In ARAX's browser interface, a user's query is input as a query graph which in general can have nodes of fixed identity or wildcard nodes of a fixed bioentity type, like protein. Here's a query graph for a query to find proteins that acetaminophen interacts with um, by consulting structured knowledge bases and overlaying literature semantic distance information. And here are the results ranked by confidence score. ARAX can show its work. You can click on any results to view the provenance of the knowledge triples underlying the result. One of the challenges we faced in developing ARAX was how to rank result subgraphs based on their edge strengths. So uh, David Kozlicki and I developed a method that integrates three measures, 
the Frobenius norm of the weighted adjacency matrix, the maximum pairwise max flow, and the path weight of the longest geodesic path. ARAX has a web browser interface that enables you to define a query graph and run it against multiple knowledge providers and get back ranked results. But to enable more sophisticated graph analysis workflows, uh, we created a structured language, which we call Araxi. Here's an example of an Araxi workflow for finding drugs to treat Parkinson's disease. ARAX's analysis modules are accessible as Araxi commands. The overlay module adds quantitative relationships onto a working knowledge graph based on any of three pairwise association measures. The filter module can re remove edges from the working graph based on a given predicate, such as minimum edge score. And the infer module uses machine learning to predict novel drug indications based on local graph structure. <clears throat> The method used, uh, that machine learning method used, um, is described in a recent preprint first authored by Chun Yu Ma from David Kozlicki's group at Penn State. ARAX's built in knowledge graph, RTX KG2, aggregates knowledge from 70 sources. It's hosted in a custom in memory graph database called CloverDB that was developed by my PhD student, Amy Glenn. CloverDB is specifically adapted to meet the requirements for being used in Translator such as supporting chaining of transitive relationships. So here's an example of an ultra rare disorder for which ARAX was used to try and recommend treatments based on the molecular knowledge network of the gene that is thought to cause the disorder. The disorder, it, it's a mouthful. It's called uh, familial paroxysmal non-kinesogenic dyskinesia. It is very rare with the prevalence of one in 5 million people. Translator, Sorry, um, ARAX returns a ranked list of potential therapeutic agents, and for each result returned, the knowledge graph specific to that result can be displayed by clicking on the plus symbol. The Translator Consortium has released a beta version of a user interface for the system through which you can query not just ARAX, but all six reasoning agents. We recently published an open access paper on ARAX in the journal Bioinformatics provides a lot more details about how ARAX works and what it can do. If you want to try out ARAX, you can use it at arax.ncats.io. And if you want to try out the new translator-wide user interface, you can find it at ui.translator.io. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sam. Um, are there any questions? So first, I would like to take one question from you. So first of all, I'm going to use uh, try to uh, thank you very much for providing the resources. And second, so uh, I imagine, but I just want to get your confirmation. Do you have access also via API to go, or it's only the web browser? <laughs> Um, yes, there is access both to ARAX and to the whole of Translator uh, via a uh, web API. Um, and so the particular um, um, uh, uh, information uh, standard by which uh, people uh, communicate with this um, API is called the Translator API or TRAPI. And so um, the details about how to formulate your query in TRAPI and to feed it to the API are described in um, the, um, the bioinformatics paper. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And I would go for a second question, actually. Have you, so I understand this is, um, the knowledge base actually is based on a graph database, right? Yes. Technology. And you develop it, or you use something that is already existent, or can you be <laughs> Sure. Uh, okay. So uh, to be clear, my PhD student developed uh, that in-memory graph database. My, my principal contribution was suggesting to her that it would be too hard. Um, so that <laughs> she, uh, she developed, um, developed that uh, system herself, uh, mostly uh, to circumvent some of the performance issues that we were seeing with the commercial uh, graph database engine that we had previously been using. Thank you very much. I'll take the 